الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد so yesterday we spoke about tahara tahara in its type ta'rif tahara wa anwa'iha and we said that tahara has a is defined in the language in the arabic language as nidafa or as uh, purification and it means to remove impurities and things that are filthy and it is of two types hisiya wa ma'nawi and hisiya has to do with our senses those things which we see smell taste etc related to the body the physical impurities and ma'nawi is related to the spiritual purification and we also mentioned that shar'an that the meaning of tahara or purification has to do with removing uh, filth or those things which prohibit prayer from the body with water or with clean earth or um, etc and it also relates to purifying a person's body and their place of worship the place of salat as well as your clothing and related to that also one of the things we mentioned is that the asal of ma or the origin of water is that it's pure and so all water that comes from the sky you know from wind, from rain or that comes from the earth whether it be in a pond or whether it be in a well or a spring that all of this is tahur and by tahur we mean that it, it pure it's pure it's in and of, of itself it's pure and it purifies other things and so that's how we can use it for wudu and we also mentioned that when it mixes with something which is also that's that's pure but not for example something like tea or something like grain or something like this and it changes its taste or its smell its taste or its smell or its color then we should not use it for purification but it's still tahir but it's not tahur so meaning that although it is tahir that it's still a type of it's still pure but it is not something that you can purify yourself with and this is the statement of most of the ulama although some scholars divide water into two gap categories and they say that Uh, those two categories are like uh, that either water is pure and it purifies or that it is nudges but the statement that the or the opinion of the jamhur of the ulama is that water is divided into three types and that it is either tahur meaning that it is pure in and of itself and it purifies other than it and the second category is that is uh bahir meaning that it is it is pure it's a substance that's pure but you cannot make wudu from it you cannot uh rid yourself of your impurities from it for example if we put kool-aid or something like that in water it changes its substance it's changed its color and its taste and possibly its smell so therefore it is no longer it is also no longer considered water we now call it kulay so that you cannot make wudu with even though it's a pure substance kulay is pure and we can drink it but it is not the type of purity that you can purify with meaning that you can purify your body with the spiritual uh, the, the purity of making wudu or ghusl a bath or a shower for salat and nor can you remove impurities in the earth like urine or de- uh, um, you know defecation or something like this you cannot remove with 
Kool-Aid, but you must use water or that which takes uh, can replace water. And also related to this, we mentioned that that those three characteristics, the smell, the taste, and the color, also if something nudges or impure falls into your container, for example, for water, for making wudu or making your ghusl, for example, if some urine falls into it, and the correct opinion, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, is that as long as it doesn't change one of those characteristics, you can still use it. Even if it's a little or it's a lot of water. And the, and the scholars of Islam, the scholars of jurisprudence, they differ in regards to this. However, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but the correct statement which some of them hold is that it doesn't have to do with the amount of water, but what it has to do with the fact if it changes one of those three characteristics of water, then it becomes impure. So if an impure substance, for example, a little bit of um, urine or some uh, blood from premenstrual bleeding or something falls in a container of water which you're going to make wudu as long as it does not change the characteristics of it the, the smell, the taste, or the color then you can still use that substance uh, for, you can still use that water for wudu it is not affected and the Prophet Sallallahu said in the matur la yanjusu shay that verily water is pure and nothing uh, makes it impure and there's a hadith which is weak which is dhaif which uh, but the meaning there's a consensus from the scholars about its meaning that if the uh, the one of those three the those three characteristics of water does not change then that water is still uh, pure. And the final thing I wanted to mention is related to also when we mention that the spiritual impurity, that this refers to, uh, or this is evidence from the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says, Inna al mushrikun najisun, that verily the pagans are. Uh, nudges, n- nudges, nudges, that they are impure. And this impurity, although the scholars of the, uh, Islam do differ over this, but the correct view is that, ta'ala, is that this refers to the spiritual impurity. So pagans, they have a spiritual impurity, and that is because of the lack of tawheed, and the lack of worshipping the law alone, and their uh, committing polytheistic their polytheistic belief and their polytheistic acts of worship that's what makes them impure it isn't their body, it isn't their physical impurity and that's why it's permissible for us to shake the hands and deal with uh, non-Muslims and, and pagans because there is no impurity with them as far it, 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 it relates to their spiritual impurity that they are not like they do not have possessed the, the spiritual purification that a believer possesses as the Prophet ﷺ said in the Mu'min La Yanjis that verily the believer does not become impure and so this also relates to the the uh, spiritual purity and so Related to this is a hadith that which uh, verifies for us because we, we covered it already. But it's the hadith of Abu Huraira. And Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil bahar huwa tu'ur ma'hu al hillu maytatuhu. Akhraja arba wa ibn Abi Shayba wa lathlahu wa sahahu ibn Khuzayma wa tirmidi wa rahu. Malik wa Shafi'i wa Ahmed. So in this hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
where he said that the Prophet ﷺ said regarding the sea that it is uh, pure, its water is pure, and the dead sea creatures are lawful to eat. And the context of this hadith relates to uh, there was a man he came to the Prophet ﷺ جَاءَ رَجُلٌ إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنَّا نَرْكُبُ الْبَحَرِ وَنَحْمِلُ الْمَعْنَى قَلِيلٌ مِنَ الْمَعْنَى So a man he came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said O Messenger of Allah verily we travel on the sea we travel on the sea and we carry with us very little water فَإِن تُوَذَأْنَ بِهِ عَتِشْنَا أَفَنَا تُوَذُوا مِنْ مَعَ الْبَحَرِ and if we make wudu we become thirsty so can we make wudu from the sea water the Prophet ﷺ responded فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم هُوَ تَهُورُ بَاهُ أَحِلُّ مَيْتِهُ that's the hadith we just covered and so the Prophet ﷺ said that the water of the sea is pure and the dead sea creatures are lawful for us to eat. So this means that when a person is in the sea, regardless of whether it's salt water, and this makes uh, verifies for us whether it's salt water or fresh water, that you can make your wudu and you can make ghusl in the sea. And also that is a very large body of water and nothing uh, will in cause it to be impure la yanjizuhu shay so we can use the seawater so it would be sufficient according to the statement of some of the scholars that if a person had the, their niya to make ghusl to, to make the uh, to wash themselves for the prayer I mean the, the ceremonial ba- bathing and they said Bismillah and they jumped into the sea and in the sea they also as and this is also the poll of some of the, st- the scholars that they made Tamadmada was Stanshaka they took water in their mouth and washed their mouth out in their nose as well in the sea then that's sufficient for a ghusl that would be sufficient because the, their whole body was immersed in the water and that would be sufficient for this removing the ceremonial impurities if someone was Janaba uh, or whatever required for them to make ghusl then that would be sufficient to do that in the sea or to use the sea water to make wudu some of the benefits we gain from this hadith Sheikh uh, Sheikh Safi Rahman al Mubarak Puri mentions in his explanation of Bulugh Maram, he mentions some very beneficial benefits regarding this hadith. He said, Well, hadith Dalil ala Taharat al Ma'al Bahar Mutlaqin, min ghayr tafsir, wa enna jami al haywanat al Bahar halal wa in kana kal kalbi wa khanziri. So the Shaykh said, that this hadith, this hadith is evidence that all the water, all the sea water, is pure without exception. And there, and this is without any details. That you, you don't, there's no, nothing restricting that. But this is without exception. And he also says that all the creatures that live in the sea, or all the the the, the, the animals that are in the, the sea that are, are dead are lawful for conception for, for, for eating and you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best as some of the scholars say no that there is a restriction here and that this relates only to fish in the sea okay but the shaykh he mentioned in kana kel kel he mentioned that even if it was a dog